Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Yeah, I know. Because I can't get right. It's what we do, baby. This is Race Wars. Race Wars. I have the power. With Kurt Metzger. Yeah, you fucking mind, dude. And Sherrod Small. Saddle down, bitch. Race Wars. Ah, this is uh, Can't Get Right with Kurt Metzger. And also, it's Race Wars as well because uh, Sherrod Small, my old racial adversary. Yes, the one who <laughs> raised you out of nothing from just a Kwanzaa bucket. Yeah, if you ever saw, what's that movie with um, uh, uh, Dennis Quaid and... Louis Gossett Jr. is an alien, and they Enemy Mine. Enemy Mine. What? You ever seen that? I think so, but not. Did you see since... a poster of Enemy Mine? This is how I imagine. You just wanted to pull up something. You did so happy you got the power to tell somebody to pull something up. Guys, Mike, let's pull that up. <laughs> he wasn't in the show for ten <laughs> seconds. You already pulled. I was things. trying to. It was like a race war, but of aliens, and uh, but Dennis Quaid and Louis Gossett. Louis Gossett, of course, has a thick. <laughs> Louis Gossett's oh man, that's why I didn't know it was Louis Gossett. Yeah, he like he's on Star Trek. And so they're at war, but then they get trapped together and need each other to survive. And then <sighs> this one, Louis Gossett's alien race, they just make babies automatically out of them. And uh, what do you mean out well, automatically? Like an egg, I guess. And then uh, Dennis Quaid has to raise the alien baby. He has to because the black father, Louis Gossett, didn't take care of his alien baby. Well, he's not black; he's an alien. Yeah, but they know who they had play him. Now that he don't take care of his kids. Louis Gossett Jr. does a lot of iconic alien voices, believe it or not. Like what? Uh, there's one, this video game Half-Life, that's been around for years. Louis Gossett Jr. is like, it's like. Uh, you know he's just, Brooklyn's own too, by the way. No, I didn't. Yeah, born and raised in Brooklyn, Queens, Dodger fan. A Queens boy. The Brooklyn Dodger fan. Oh, why would I even know that? Because you seem Did you to learn love... that in school? <laughs> yes, I went to Louis Gossett Jr. High School. <laughs> we were good in baseball. Oh, uh, but yeah, he's Brooklyn. He's a New York dude. Um, no shit. When did you watch this movie? Like, why did this movie pop in your head all of a sudden? Because well, it had a beautiful message about <laughs> natural enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you too. <laughs> I got also because I've been going down a big alien hole. Okay, <laughs> like watching it. Uh, yeah. Wanted to learn more about your origin. Yeah. Yeah. These you know, you dried aliens that seem to show up in people's <laughs> houses at night. I'm like, I know, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yes. You know what alien movie that I love though? Uh, uh, was it Protect the Block, the English one? That uh, is it called Protect the Block? It's something like that. Defend the Block. Pull, Attack pull, the Block. Attack the Block. Right. Yeah. Pull it up. That's a fucking uh, classic. Love it. That's the dude from the black dude from uh, uh, Star Wars. That's like why that. I thought because I watched that not too long ago. Love it. Uh, I watched it with a girlfriend not too long ago. Yeah. Like like last year. And I forgot how awesome that guy was. I remember him being awesome in it. Right. But the end when he's got a katana and the alien. And I was like, oh, I could see why they would pick him to be a fucking. Yes. Yes. And then. You saw the whole What do they do with him? Yeah. yeah. No, he, he don't even become the Luke Skywalker. He uses it as a butt plug. And then that girl becomes the fucking Skywalker. Right. But he did get a. He got a. A chance to have a fight with a lightsaber in the first one. He got it should have been back. all about him. Oh, yeah. That's the fucking yeah, no, hero you're right. guy. You're right. And they turned him into a bemused. Yeah, sidekick. As my friend Ethan Van Skyver says, a <laughs> bemused and submissive black man. Yeah. That's what they do at Disney. Yeah. Because what's Disney? Everything's going to be a Disney princess. No yeah. matter what it is. No matter what. And if they buy ball. Rambo, Rambo's going to get made into a, bra- a strong princess. Right. That's what they do. And then a black man got to be a folk singing frog or something. I mean, a toad who knows pretend, the blues. They can pretend they're not doing zippity doo dah no more, but guess what? They're still doing it. A hundred times. They're still doing it. They're still he doing didn't it. Plow, if he wasn't hooking up with the chick. Yeah, he should have hit that. Okay. That's absolutely what should have happened. Even Billy D. Williams, when you saw him in there, he was like this. You ain't smashed that? Yeah. Billy yeah. D. would have hit that in space. Yeah, Billy D. wasn't happy either. That good old space pulls out. Anyway, that guy would have been an awesome if they had they done it right. But that movie was great. They should have made part two of Attack the Block. Mm. Why'd they make him talk with an American accent in Star Wars when he has a British accent and that works better in a space thing? But the space thing is if you had a British accent, usually you're like a bad guy. It still would have worked better if he had a British accent. See, Billy D. Williams, when he was talking about the Han Solo prequel that they made with uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. With uh, Glover. Yeah, Danny Glover. No. I mean, (laughs) Ronald Glover. What's his name? Yeah, Ronald Glover. The little Glover. Yeah, little Glover. I love him. Yeah, he used to do that Crash Mansion show. Yes. Uh, So, wait. So, 
when Billy D. Williams was like, well, I didn't like that he had kind of like a natural Afro look. He goes, because when I was doing it, I was trying to be something from space that you wouldn't see on, like it's not supposed to, right. re- it's not supposed to represent anything you know. It's supposed right. to be in fucking space. Yes. A galaxy far, them, far away, they still got and picks. You, you don't have to get that wild. You just give them, have them not talk like an American and, and that'll be like, oh, an alien. <laughs> He's black with a British accent. Like, yeah. You can make the effect so easily. But you know, they tried that before and we got Jar Jar Binks, so I don't want them tinkering with uh, Hub. Man, Jar Jar Binks, that poor guy. Lord have mercy. That poor black actor. Oh who my God. Got some great work who uh, thought he was going to go places. I remember I him in an episode. Himself. He was in an episode of Good Time. That's why I first saw him. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, right. JJ Binks played JJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't know how to, you know, sometimes treat black people in the future or space. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks. It looked like when Snoop Dogg went Rasta. What's the dude's name? What's the, the English dude's name? What's his, uh, the, the, who we talking about? The actor. You know his name? His name, I got it. It's running on the tip of my tongue. But he's he's great. He, and it was that other kid in that movie too who was great, who's in Top Top Boy. Oh yeah, Mike, who plays um the 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 black guy in uh, the new Star Wars who got? Frankly, uh, they treated John Coffee better than him in uh a Bodega bo- in uh, Green Mile. The guy from the Green John Mile Boyega. was treated with more respect. John Bodega, it's not like Boyega, <laughs> Boyega. Yeah, yeah, John Boyega was treated Boyega. less respectfully than the Green Mile. Oh, uh, the, uh, then uh, Michael, big boy, Michael, big boy, because he got well, to grab. He goes, put your put your balls in my hand, boss, and uh, they healed his balls. Yeah. Then they brought him out of prison to be alone with like with the governor. Or I don't know what. He said he touched more white people. He got to touch more white ass. Yeah, yeah, and Chinese and private parts than John Boyega, who should have been getting the Filipino girl and the white girl. Yeah, but I think they pushed that. It was like the Harry Potter movie. When he pushed the Asian girl on him, dude, it's like I Asian know. girls are now the new like you gotta have. That's gotta be the yeah, love interest. Because if you want to be who's... successful, you gotta date someone in tech. Yeah, <laughs> tech. That's the yeah. Did Silicon you see, Valley. Do you ever see Mark Zuckerberg when he uh, uh, his wife? <laughs> he named his firstborn after Xi Jinping. No. In somewhat, yeah, because he was hoping to get Facebook into China, I guess. Oh, Lord have mercy. And Xi Jinping was like, that's really weird. I don't know you. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. But but he did not really do that, did he? Yeah. Lu Jing? Uh, his son Lu Jing. Do you put Mark Zuckerberg for- uh, Jing Zuckerberg. Xi Jinping child name, and, and it's so- Is it Ping Zuck? <laughs> I know. It doesn't sound racist. Is this his kid, it? you said? Mark Zuckerberg named his child, his firstborn child, after, after the president- yeah, if you put Mark Zuckerberg, Xi, X-I, Jinping, baby name, the story will come up. I heard he named his uh, daughter, the second kid, uh, Marianne Beijing. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> no, you got to name it after the leader. It says Maxima and August. What? <laughs> That's what the name is coming up. Like, you can pull this up if you want. No, no, does it? Uh, Maxima you put and Xi August. Jinping and Mark Zuckerberg and baby name and just the story? Because the story is... Oh, well, yeah. There's a story. He asked the president to give his unborn baby an honorary Chinese name. Oh, he asked him to give an honorary oh, Chinese name. Oh, he said, okay. Yeah. He said, so, you know, like you he asked him to name the baby. Yeah. And he, he was like, wanted to, and he yeah. said, no. And Xi Jinping's like, that's not, he, I don't lo- love you or care about you. He named it no Maxima. imports. <laughs> that's an insult to all of China, which you just did, Mark Zuckerberg. But Ch- fucking- Zuckerberg has a Chinese wife, right? A Chinese hologram wife. Come on, don't do that. That hologram <laughs> pussy still pussy. He's got a holo- Chinese hologram pussy is what I heard. And then uh, T.J. Miller, when he got in trouble for uh, like roasting her or something, I, oh, she was she was heckling him at an event. Who was? T.J. Miller, and he snapped on her. And remember that? That was a whole controversy. Whose wife? Zuckerberg's wife. Okay. Pull you that up. Pull that up. You don't remember that? No. When TJ, uh, she was trying to heckle him well, from the big respect to TJ Miller. And he stung her, and then that's why they took him off. If TJ uh, stung her good, I got. I'm that's gonna, when HBO dropped him. I think. I'll text him right now and tell him. No, that really respect. happened. No, you don't remember that, really? No. There's it was been huge. so many offenses. This was caught on camera because there's yes. videos of people yes. talking about it. No, it's on camera. Nice. There's him on stage, and why she have I not waited? Right? Yeah. It's some good. This good, is what race wars is all about. Non black okay. people involved nonsense. But it was good. Yeah, yeah, that was uh he snapped on his wife. What, his what wife is, was, do you know what event it was at? Maybe it's like Zuckerberg. There's a million like heckler videos coming up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, like, TJ Miller, Zuckerberg wife. That's what I did. And it, what comes it, up? Heck, it, heckler videos are coming up first. That's why. Mm. Like the algorithm's just pushing like this TJ is a great uh, all the ones. Uh, see what you're saying. Is there any super chats like Maybe they scrub it. it. He tried to scrub it. 
Whoops. All right, hold on. I'm going to get to the bottom of this fucking shit. Yeah, this was a big thing. And it was rumored. That's why he got in trouble. Yeah, because I will take it as a, con- a conspiracy if he attacked yeah. the wrong Zuckerberg's wife. No, it was her. She was, But she was heckling him first, I believe. Of course she was. You know, she's up in there like, you know who my husband is? Yeah, my husband's not even from this earth. <laughs> <laughs> Priscilla Chan. Let me go. You're going to type a whole name in. Now, when Kurt got on something, he's on it. He's like a dog with a bone. He can't. I can't not, let go of it. Wait. He cannot do this. Heckled. <laughs> Come he's, on. He can't help it. Look at him. No, don't say nothing about TJ Miller. They, scrub? they scrubbed it. They scrubbed it. That's oh, power. That's you think some real Deadpool, power. You think Deadpool had to take it, have it taken down for part three? I mean, you why know? can't you find anything about it? Okay, who remembered this first? You did, right? I did. And how about how long ago was it? A few years before the pandemic. Fuck, there's not even like a smear piece on TJ about it. Uh, well, we have to go straight to the source then. Let's get T.J. Miller on the line. All right. Is anybody watching the chat at all that would knows about this or remembers it? Let me see. If Let's I get T.J. on the phone. No. I mean, yeah. No? There's, there's people watching the chat. No one. Oh, that came back fast. No, there's, nobody gives a shit about this. <laughs> but I care so much. <laughs> yeah. You know, a... Buddy Bolton's going to be coming in. Charge. You know Buddy Bolton, right? I love Buddy. I love Buddy Bolton. He's a great comic and a great friend. And uh, you said you found him, what, doing some UFO stuff? Yeah. Yeah, that's not surprising. All you white I was people. watching videos of UFO stuff. Okay? Right. What time now, of the morning was it? It was, uh, I started about 10. Okay. What were you snacking on? What kind of snacks? You had some treats. I know that. Uh, my girl had made some pancakes. <laughs> she had made pancakes. Uh, she knows how to calm that beast inside of you, don't yeah. she? Some flapjacks. I yell like uh, in, uh, in her advice, like, Moto, panicako. <laughs> <laughs> She's Japanese. I like the respect. Like, uh, is she Japanese? Did you see even hair advice? <laughs> What's his name? Going, Moto Panakeko. <laughs> He's yelling at the Japanese guy making a pancake. They're not as good as my mother's, but I come here for the respect. <laughs> <laughs> panakeko. <laughs> I didn't see that, but uh, anyway, we're watching UFO stuff. And, okay, uh, Linda Moulton. Is this the lady show? Linda Moulton Crow. Okay, she's on. She pops up on Ancient Aliens. She's I go for her. She got her, her, herself a husband out of all this. She's an older gal yeah. with Linda uh, Moulton Ho. How? How? <laughs> Moulton Ho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. The president of China. Okay. Name, if you go so on YouTube, if you're trying to find good alien shit, yeah. Guess what? Is it the people that got the real information? They don't have good YouTube channels generally. There's only a few. A lot of them have like websites that are like old and. You know, they haven't been upkept, but that's okay. where you find the good shit. Okay. Is this and a dark web? It, you have to practically go to the dark web, okay. I'll call it. Okay. Um, and then there's uh, your doctor, Stephen Greer's. Do you know who that is? No. Will you, Mike, find a, a Stephen Greer UFO? Is and, he a black dude? No, he's white with a, a tra- oh, terribly terrible skin. Is he always on these uh, UFO shows that you might yes. see? At the- he's like a jacked. He's 70, dude. Okay fucking jacked okay and he uh he i what i now when i watch his shit it looks like an infomercial for uh his retreats probably like 3500 a pop and like he'll like you'll make contact and that is a little bit like he's know. promising that you will make contact yeah it's a close encounter of the fifth kind okay and where's this phoenix the problem is the contact is with his mouth yeah, his, <laughs> his mouth on your genitalia while you sleep yeah, I was uh, paralyzed. I couldn't move. That's right. I saw a large head uh, coming up the side of the bed. <laughs> uh, it's blurry. There was some, I think there was some semen was harvested. <laughs> Do you have anything you could play of Stephen Greer? Okay. So what I like to do is look, listen to everybody's stories. Okay. And, and um, now, do they have stories of abduction, or do they have stories of witnessing uh, alien activity, or these all guys kinds are just of professors? Shit. Okay, look, who study the? So here's why I judge it by. Okay. Okay. Besides the obvious, like it could, just, you know, probably horseshit. Um, how quick do they get into every other thing? So, so if they're like, and that's where Bigfoot came from, I'm like, all right. Okay. Yeah. Or if it's like they get into quote like this guy always quotes some yogi, some Indian bullshit about okay. his conscience. I'm like, listen, save me the Deepak, <laughs> the Deepak <laughs> UFO Chopra, Chopra yeah. whatever the fuck this is, timeless body and ageless mind Chopra. Yeah, you 
UFO pro. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> want no UFO pros. <laughs> I can I want, show you his top videos and you could pick what you want. Okay, to let's do that. Okay. I always get mad when some of these UFO this, people try to discredit uh, black people for uh, building the pyramids and stuff like that. As soon as I hear that, I'm out. We have a trailer yeah. for one of You want to watch like a trailer for one of his Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's exactly oh, what I like yes. to the do. The sexiest one you can find, too. Let's get space crazy oh, today. The question is often asked when will UFO disclosure happen? These lights, they keep coming together? The answer is it has. What? Hello. The New York Times revealed the existence of a secret government program. Wait, hold on. Press pause. Okay, it has, but for some reason, they only went to the guy from Blink-182 and Demi Lovato with this information. <laughs> hey, Tom? Tom? <laughs> yeah. Here's the, who we disclosed it to. We thought long and hard. Tom DeLong <laughs> on Blink-182 and Demi Lovato. We chose Demi Lovato <laughs> to try to explain human gender to the aliens. <laughs> It's the only way we can defeat them by trying to explain our gender system to them <laughs> and then the logic. To, <laughs> like Star Trek. Okay, God. He hates the vo- 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 government program to investigate UFO sites. This is a very complicated okay. story. I have put a briefing together for every president since Bill Clinton. They haven't read it, but I did make <laughs> no, it. No, I mailed it to an address that wasn't theirs. I think well, I think we got our wires crossed or something, but I'm working on getting that to them right away. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. I wrote it in crayon. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Play, play. Is this him? Yes. Now, if you look at the sides of his face, it looks like they've experienced interplanetary bombardment. Yeah, this dude ain't. <laughs> by hot comets. Yeah. Or hot T-zone. meteorites. Got okay. a bad T zone. Bad T zone, man. Yeah. Thing that they want the public to be afraid of. This is a national security imperative. We must have American dominance in space. (laughs) (laughs) The national security state, they want to establish a planetary government by spinning that this is a threat. One set of facts, two narratives. The threat isn't extraterrestrial. The threat is covert human. The close encounters of the fifth kind protocols developed by Dr. Greer the most dangerous information he has released to the public. Okay, this is where the bullshit really starts. Okay. And if you're like, okay, hey, of uh, aliens, his uh, fucking uncle works for like Northrop Grumman or some somebody who would have UFOs. If, if who, they, this guy? Yeah, he's like some Lockheed baby or something. So here's where the bullshit is. When he goes, close to kind of fifth kind, there's the most dangerous information. Mm-hmm. What that is an info because I watch it, it's for free online. It's an infomercial to go to one of his retreats, and then you sit like a bunch of HBO's real sex 19 hippies and fucking concentrate. And then I'm guessing somebody shoots some flares up out of the woods. Can we can we go? We should go. Well, I think we should go and experience this before we judge it. I would I would ask the chat to really lobby. uh, Let's see what kind of (laughs) experience this would be. Guys, digital network to set us up on a Set us up. We should go to that. We should go to that. Holy shit. I could like look into it and see if we can. Okay, Mike, look into taking, a, I like a close encounter of the fifth kind. I will go with an open mind. And not the Kurt. kind Sherrod said, which is interracial cock. <laughs> 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 it's out of this world. <laughs> Listen to me, I think we should go through before I don't want a John Mayer surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with guitar lessons, so. <laughs> Your loss. <laughs> Uh, is possible. Oh, so what oh, he does, so when I'm watching, it's like, oh, this is an ad for like, come, because everybody's like, yeah, I went there. It's like Tony Robbins, but yeah. Tony Robbins shows you a fucking UFO. And a $500,000 watch that now, you'll never own. Put in Linda Moulton Howe. Now, let me see it. Let me see it. Let me take a look. Now hers, thing. here's why I like hers. So this guy's thing. She got big titties? She's very old, Shrod. Titties ain't, so what? Titties can be big and old. You know I mean, what? Wow. Those milk tumors have metastasized. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's the name of her new book. (laughs) Those are metastasized titties. So I like, because what I want to know is, like, you ever see Bob Lazar, the guy that went on Rogan and talked about working on the show? Yes. He's had some good stuff now. And some I watched, people got some credible information. I got about. yeah. I, there, there's a body language guy that I'm friends with named Scott Rouse who does good body language readings. When do and, you meet these people? <laughs> uh, the, him I know through Kyle. He's a fan of the show. But so he's anyway. like, hey man, I read bodies. Uh, no, you yeah, came they in do. here lying. You lied. Remember right the when show? You came remember the show? Lie to me with Tim Roth. Yes. 
that's based on him and some friends of his. They were the consultants for that, and yeah. he was like, they turned it into complete horse shit. Because a lot of me, he could just tell. He would turn his head. He goes, "You're lying." Like, yes, yes. And it's not like that. It's not a thing that you could be. It, it, it's very reasonable. They used it in the it. campaigns too. Remember in the campaigns uh, in 2016 or whatever. They used a whole bunch of people in that uh, in the debates to see who was telling truth, lying. Oh, is that right? Yeah, tells, yeah. Yeah, so it's, but you have, you know, the whole, you have to establish a baseline and figure it out. And he yeah. came on, I'm going to have him on again. We, when you come to LA, dude, we'll do it and have him on. He'll do body it. language. But um, it's very interesting. And he, wa- and not him, but another body language guy watched Bob Lazar and uh, was like, his body language is not. Lying. Yeah. There's no now, deception. I wouldn't, eat, I'm not even going by a body language thing, but it was interesting. But the story that Bob Lazar told is eerie when he's telling on Rogue. It's like eerie. Yeah. The story. Like, which one really scared you? Which one was so eerie? Let's let's, let's take a look at it. Whoa. Well, oh, did anybody already not see this? So much more. Popular. I didn't see the shit all of it. So much more. I don't popular. watch Bob Ro- Joe. Joe Rogan is it? Joe Rogan like the rest of y'all is fucking twerk. You no, know, I never listen to anybody's podcast. But you listen to it, you bro. Uh, if you let me finish before Sorry. stomping all over me, like. <laughs> I'll save my stomp. Go. Like an alpha male Rogan fan. Oh, I love Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> um, the clips on you on YouTube they would pop up on my feed, so they're short clips of like, and he gets like good people. So yeah. put in Bob Lazar, uh, alien, uh, Bob Lazar. He said something that was fucking crazy on it. Yeah, when it's yeah, yeah, like, uh, like but it's been a lot of uh, classified papers that's been uh, declassified well, recently. So, so I have a, pr- a very popular clip of him on Joe Rogan. Okay, play it. You never saw this? Is the shirts off? Is the shirt scans him and Rogan? It's uh, shirts, no pants. Now, I'm not in, believe yeah. it or not, I'm not into UFOs. I don't follow the stories. Really, or, Bill Nye, the you science guy? Your experience? Just be no, I'm open fascinated mind, with the technology, and I, I it really it irks me like every night minutes. I go to sleep. Like, Urkel? Yes. You know, I don't... <laughs> that it was my own doing, essentially, that... That prevented me from continuing on in the in the project. I mean, it's the to be on that cutting edge of technology is so alluring to me. Right. But you know, uh, by the same token, I don't really care that there's aliens or where they come from. I mean, the prize is the technology. That's how that's autistic what I'm he is. By, but so I don't you listen know. to UFO. I just like trains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this one goes fast. <laughs> All right, but you hear he regrets ever talking about it and Big fucking plus up. Big Plus likes fucking up him getting knowledge about it. Yeah, so how, how he described it is the they like he would work on it's all compartmented and that's the common thing you hear people had anything to do with anything. Right, they break it down on so many things you only know so much about it. Yeah, and so they didn't tell him shit about it. Right. He heard from the guy. He talks about a guy he worked with in there. Right, run in his time. mouth. Yeah. And he said, like, from what I was told by, I don't know that it was an, from an archaeological dig, mm. the shit they had. Mm. And he saw a specific cre- – well, anyway, he describes it. That's – I want to hear those details. I don't want to yeah. hear about Baba Yogi's fucking meditations that you talk to a fucking praying mantis. Right. I want to know, like, we like dry nerd. Right. This is what I saw as exactly. one of my nerd eyes. Yeah. And yeah, okay, go ahead, trying press to make play. reason out of it. Thing. But George Knapp oh, is, wow. um, I mean, he's the guy that has the context and tries to thread everything together. And uh, what he recently told me is he found. Uh, stop dropping down on people. He's either documentation or people that he spoke to. It's at this, the existence Here's of this that. project, the project that I was on. It's something that they. Seem to take out every eight or ten years. So that's a very specific memo, and this is actually I, this is the first time. Now I'll this guy, the, the well, movie who's the pirate that's uh, hosting. So this fucking uh, uh, small batch uh, independent brewer. <laughs> <laughs> who's this Doug Dynasty ass? This guy who pickles his own fucking beets and snap snap beans. <laughs> Williamsburg Brewery. This guy who who really admires <laughs> Gavin McGinnis' fashion sense, but doesn't like what he stands for now. He rides a bicycle made of wood. This guy rides a bicycle with one giant wheel and one tiny wheel. A penny farther. He's this, a penny farther. <laughs> you guys talking about me? Oh yeah, well, he's got a mic. Mike, you don't even. You, you got a long way I got to go. Even. No, this guy. Is... Now I assume your goal is to have uh, hold up. <laughs> I like, love you guys. Like shoulder press one of those barbells with big balls on the end of it. <laughs> you like the third right brother. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather Kirk, keep my, my balls down here. below. My big this is Marquis of Queensberry boxer. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're forty rounds of bare knuckle. Your guest is here. This smoke break is brought to you by YoDelta.com. 
the official getting high sponsor of the gas digital network oh buddy's in he's in okay let me yeah, just I'm insult here. jeremy oh buddy that's who hold on we're just insulting line. jeremy corbell's hipster look for a couple more seconds yeah it's like he's, <laughs> buddy, <laughs> he buddy he insults me buddy Whoa. Oh, buddy, up, bold bold. Great seeing you guys. Oh, you buddy. Guys, I love you. I want to reach through. And buddy Boltron. <laughs> yeah, Buddy Bolton. Uh, seen, we know many I years. I just want to say to the audience, I didn't know I was going to be recorded, but I, I've seen both of these guys do some of the most despicable, amazing shit in my life. I these appreciate two, right? that. That's right. That's we true. too worked with UFOs. That's true. And we fucked those aliens. Oh, and, right in the uh, south they asked mouth. For it. Got it. We're They're all here. adults. I don't know what they call it, but I put it right in the south mouth. It's uh, it's uh, technically a cloak, a cloak. Yeah, is that too much? Okay, so buddy, what's going on? Not much, my friends. I love you guys. You know, uh, I've been out of comedy for a while now. Uh, after my mom passed, I reprioritized my life, and uh, uh, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of really cool explorations. You know, I never really made an issue of it in uh, comedy for obvious reasons, but I have a big <laughs> belief since childhood of intuition. And our intuitive abilities. And, um, you know, you just see it in life time and time again. You know, your grandma will say, like, don't, you know, uh, you've been, you need cranberry juice. This is actually a real story for me. You don't, you have to drink cranberry juice. Well, pee after sex. Oh, I'm going to college. I'm 20 years old, you know, and I go to college and I have a kidney problem. Uh, so it's like, how do they know this shit? So I've been doing a lot of that stuff and working with scientists. And because you were a um, drunk, you were a drinker back then. And shit. Nana knew. Nana knew you were drinking back then. She knew yeah. you were going to get a some type of oh, yeah. drinking thing oh, yeah. or a UTI. Yeah, we did it's all college. Kind of drugs. It's college. You're going to get a UTI. Did all kind of fucking partying with Buddy Bolton. <laughs> Classic comic strip partying. Yes. In the, oh in yeah. The, That's the first reason the I'm moving over there. The amount of vagina that uh, Sherrod and I got in the basement. Oh my yeah. gosh! It was a lot. It yeah, was that a was lot now. ridiculous. That's, that's not like, there was about a that list now. on the wall. Yeah, they painted over. Let's get back to the UFOs. Goddamn it! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Let me take you down a little trail, if you don't mind, for a second. <laughs> well, can um, I just tell Sherrod why? How? How I? So I've been watching this Linda Mol Moulton. Right. How? Not Crow. Okay. Earth Files. Earth Files. Incredible that's what it's lady. called. Earth so Files. what I like. So Sherrod had never seen the Bob Lazar Rogan thing. I saw pieces of it, but not that part, yeah. So I always watch these and try to just pick out a thing I haven't heard before. That's all. I don't want to, like, the guy Stephen Greer that we showed, he always takes into some fucking UFO pro shit, right? Right. And uh, I like when they're, like, dry. Like, Bob Lazar is dry. He don't right. care about none of that shit. Actual. He can, yeah. He's the most autistic technology yes. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay? And then uh, Linda Moulton Howe, she aggregates, like, every fucking story that's anybody yeah. ever had. So some Anything. of them... Yeah, like, and she has shit where I'm like, I don't fucking know, but she has so much info. And so there's a guy named Charles C. Hall that I was watching first who works, yes. according to him, with the tall whites. Okay. Do you know the alien races of the universe? Oh, they tall whites, low grains. Do you what? know? Okay, buddy. Well, uh, uh, yes, okay. Sir. Anyway, I was watching Linda Mohan. She was talking about uh, trantaloids. Draw. Okay. Trantaloids, the different classes of aliens, yes. Yes. And this is something that actually was from the... U.S. government studies, and they tried to classify them, and there's one called trontoloids, which is an insect-type classification, and it's the most hilarious name, too. Okay, wait, buddy, buddy, wait, wait, let me tell Shaw this. Hold on, before <laughs> I get to you. Let me, but no, no, that, you're right, but, so there's a guy named Richard C. Doty. He's in a movie called Mirage Men, okay. and he was yes. a, a DIA member of the Defense Intelligence Agency. Okay. His job yes, was to United put States out- Air Force. His job was to put out fake information about aliens to people so that would live well. close to a base. Yeah. It's kind of a famous thing. Now, I had not seen that. I thought that meant they were making it up. It was some drone program. Right. But this guy, Richard Doty, is like, no, there was actual alien shit. But we, and I didn't barely had to say anything to this guy. I was just telling him he's right about whatever he came up with. And uh, here's the real, there's an interview with him. The testimony of Richard C. Rich, Richard C. Doty is on Wait, YouTube. Okay. And I watched that where he talked about, and now that guy, his job was to be a bullshitter, okay? Okay. Yeah. The shit he's saying on the interview, though, is still very eerie. It, what makes it eerie is how, like, no, it doesn't sound like there's shit you kind of heard and shit you haven't, but none of it's, like, fucking meditation or your Indian religion you're into. He right. just talks about the briefings he got and how it's how you know, How yeah. we know he's not still bullshitting us? He probably is. Because he had that's been the, That's the question. That's the question. You know, he was a disinformation a uh, agent for the United States Air Force. Um, uh, USAFOI, I think it was Office of Intelligence, and he would go out <clears throat> to UFO cases 
And he's, he's famous for um, this one case where a guy was recording stuff and recording the audio from the bass, which is, you know, of course, a big no-no. <clears throat> and he went to that guy and fucked with him, <clears throat> gave him real information and fake information. And ultimately, the guy ended up killing himself. It's just, you know, he... he, he um, sure, he killed out. himself, he, like Epstein. And so Dodie's back now, and Dodie has admitted. He has admitted that he, uh, at that time, was doing disinformation to cover Black Project drones. Okay? But and he's so still a liar. He's on, Gaia. Yeah. he's on Gaia. He's on all the different TV shows and, and doing as much publicity as he can to try and promote UFOs. So I think, once again, he's doing disinformation uh, to cover Black Project. Does he have Project. a book? I I thought he was trying to write a book, but it wasn't a lot. Like... Because selling a book is also man is a tricky man. A white man tricky man. Okay, now, uh, then I watched Charles Hall, right. who is yeah, like he's a, a real deal. He's a Minnesota bumpkin, who, but he does have a degree in nuclear physics. And you he had worked, me at bumpkin. <laughs> but his is the one that was the most riveting to me because it had the most, like, I never heard that before and the least amount of... Uh, uh, Bullshit. Yeah, West Hollywood. Yeah, weird um, shit. Right. And, and non-verifiable yeah. stuff. But that guy, and he comes off as like he's pr he can be very well country dumb, as they say. But he looks very believable while he's talking. And if, there's certain tell uh, he gives weird details about these aliens, the white, the tall whites. Yeah, yeah. Their cultural life. Yeah, he they're met cult, to my yeah. understanding. I think he was a weather officer in the military. Yes. And he had this part in this range. And he was the one guy to go to this range and go around and do all this stuff. And in this area, mm. it's right outside of Area 51, uh, he made contact with I some of uh, these beings. And over well, here's, time, here's the part that hooked me, buddy. Here's what hooked me to it. Because I was like, all right, why do you... He goes, the reason I'm allowed to talk about, say anything about it is nothing I did was classified. They no one briefed me ever. They told me nothing. It is classified. Right. They would have him talk to a the neurosurgeon at the base after if he felt like it. And he the rumors it was like haunted by a a, a white <coughs> some nuclear goat. They had a joke about it. A nuclear goat. So he start so everything he <laughs> said. Yeah, but it wasn't a nuclear goat. Spoiler alert. Of course. Ah. Okay, but the, so all the things he figured out was on his own with no one telling him anything. Okay. Right. Or yes. he's a guy alone. You now it could be this very, you know, uh, a guy alone in a weather shack who has a, the brain of a nuclear physicist making up something cool. Right. But either way, yes. his details. We're spot he's on either like, a yeah. very great science fiction writer because his details hook you with like little things that I you're like. Hear him. It's all about, about the the white tall whites. That they're like basically how they get old when they get old. They live like 900 years. Yeah. Their bones Ooh. keep growing, so when they get really old, they're, they're really, really tall. Big. Like that, uh, remember that movie where one of those ghosts yes. got caught in a thing? Yes. That big white fucking. Yeah, and they look, they could wear a fucking disguise and pass as humans if you weren't looking too close. They're not like gray yeah. aliens. They just had bigger eyes that were, yeah. so, and little ears back here, and very thin hair, and they would go, they would set excursions for them to go to Vegas, and they liked going yes. to places that had a space theme. They thought it was funny. Because they ain't dressed up. He, he talked Comic -Con. about- Comic-Con. I knew I saw yeah. a couple at Comic-Con. When he when want to fuck my girlfriend. Okay. They had a thing like a little pen thing, like a, it was a pencil shaped, and yeah. the older ones had a longer one. He said, "What? What? What? You, what was that?" It was a thing that was a microwave emitting thing that they could tune to different elements in your body. So if they hit the sodium thing, be like you were being electric shocked to death. If they hit it on, an, they had one that could make you calm. They just tune it to different. And why minerals. did they? And they just have this in Vegas. And they had Vegas drunk. Just changing niggas. Moves. No, no, no. It was late. They would go at a certain time of night okay. and uh, escorted and all that shit. But our, like GE and stuff were helping them. Basically, they're not here to colonize. This is the interesting thing because they, they weren't here to save the whales. They weren't here to colonize. Right. It was like a stop on the way to other shit for them. Uh, we were helping, and they would give us technology, but nothing. Only what suited them. So if they needed right. something for their inside their, uh, like they had, a, he said he went on a ship, they had a microwave in the ship and they had this force field emitter. So they had taken the door off and they had this thing set up that would guard them. That was how the microwave. Yeah, and they had a the door broke off. Yeah, they had a lot of fiber optic. Bum ass. The way he, dis <laughs> so he, he was like, I kind of figured out, cause you weren't allowed to look at any of their shit. It's like, like a frat boy's house. It's like a frat house. It's like, oh, the door fell off. So oh, we just, wait, wait, wait. We put duct tape around it. No, yeah, it's but, a not, you know, but with an elect some extra field in physics that isn't discovered. Yes, they all would. Um, uh, the, <laughs> they're, they're called the tall whites. Protective of their kids. 
One yeah, of the he would greet. Super yeah. protective. He would say kids. to the fucking women who like the way he would talk to them. He would go, "I know you love your children more than we love our children." Is how he'd have to address. They start talking. To, like, and, they, yeah, yeah. they're super proud of like family relations, right. and if you touch one, you'd be killed. Touch one of the kids. One of oh, and, definitely that, but one of them. Okay. One guy. There was some female called the school teacher. One of them, and he he talked to another guy that they're walking down some stairs and. She looked like she was going to fall because they're like, the way they walk yeah. is different. So he reached out just to study her and she pulled out this thing and like tortured him with it. And he had to like beg for his life. She's like, do you think we're fools? Do you think we're like, and he's like, Ugh. and they would give us stuff. I've also but, yeah. heard, I heard a very similar story where someone got too close to the, uh, one of the children and uh, one of them just went up and hit him in the chest, like with an open palm and they kind of like a matrix move and they went flying, you know? Really? But, stories, but he said you know? they're weaker. Wait, wait. He said the difference is they don't heal like we're like super Wolverine he healing compared to them. Right. If they they're get really cut, fragile. Yeah. They, and they have this kind of feel where if you like throw some at it, it would just drop. And they fucking uh, are amazed at, at that. Like we're like gorillas compared to them. Oh, Our strength. Okay. This is where I started going, oh, I see the tall whites. <laughs> like there's even more whiter creatures that are <laughs> above us that. They look at us like, oh, look at them. That's uh, cute. Like, it's, but it's very, look at those. Yeah, it's fascinating. And he didn't have any ill will toward, like, he was like, they only, if it helps no. them, they talk to you. It's not like they weren't, that's the shit that was and interesting. They wouldn't talk to, they wouldn't talk to other people. He became kind of like the voice of them. And my understanding is, well, let me give you my opinion on him in general. Well, okay, wait, buddy, I'll set you up. Hold on. So then I started trying to find more. I watched this lady, Little Molten Howe. She's talking about trantaloids, these insect things that can shift shape. Right. She goes, so some remote viewers, I'm talking to a remote viewer, Buddy Bolton. Me and my girl are watching. I go, I know Buddy, a guy named Buddy Bolton. That's uh, probably not. What's the chance? Then a picture comes up of Buddy with a wiener dog. <laughs> so, you know it's him. so you know it's him. The wiener explaining dog. the inside of the trant. <laughs> I, I was like, this is the craziest shit. Mr. Pickles. <laughs> so then I texted Buddy, well, and so that's why I got him on the show. All right, so now you go, That's buddy. unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, let me... Uh, Respond to uh, my belief about him, oh, yeah. and then I'll go into really quickly remote viewing in a very, uh, you know, kind of clinical context, the way that we all prefer. I, I don't think we like the mystical, it's just not, you can't connect with it. You know, um, first, when people have a weird experience or a super weird experience, like seeing a craft or um, it, having some sort of reality expanding experience like that, it becomes, um, they get wound up in this. You see this with UFO sightings and uh, researchers uh, all the time. They'll quit their profession. They become completely focused on this and it changed their reality. That's what and, I did. I haven't done an episode of this podcast in like three weeks. Yeah. He isn't because of my whole of aliens. Yeah. I have got so much information on all of this stuff. Um, I've, you know, explored this stuff for many, many, many years. I've been involved on different levels. So I think what happened with him is something that happens with a lot of these people is they'll see a real event. They'll participate in a real event up to a level and then right. they'll just fill in a bunch of stuff and keep getting attention and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's what I thought too, buddy. And that's the case with Charles as well too. And he's very, he's very real. He's very, you, when you see him, you get this context that this is a really quiet guy off, you know, camera or off, you know, audio. Mm -hmm. He seems like a real nebbishy kind of guy. Can we you know? play so some of him? The uh, Charles C. Charles Hall, Area Charles 51. Hall, Just play whites. a little bit of it so you can understand the kind of guy. Like I said, I understand the concept of country dumb very well. And the guy's got yes, nuclear so. degrees. So he comes off like the most Ryan Hamilton esque innocent man. <laughs> 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 Young Ryan. I've I, been down to uh, Area 51, by the way, and Roswell. Well, he Fox said News. it was Area 54, not Area 51. So they yes. renamed it. Dreamland. I've heard of Dreamland. Yeah. And the there's guy, all fencing and shit over there. And, then, uh, and there's a whole you. facility inside the side of the mountain. It's definitely there. You can look at and see all the evidence for it. Um, so this all ties. You know, there's a lot of people just like him who had real experiences. I'm not talking about the ones who bullshit from the bottom up. Okay. Um, and this happens. They will get have an amazing experience, and then so the psychology of getting all that attention and stuff, yeah. symptoms, you know, spinning. Um, so me, my longtime history in, in terms of the esoteric and, you know, intuition, all that stuff started with my mom who told me, you know, dreams can be uh, prophetic. You can see the future in your dreams sometimes. Dreams can tell the future. And so that was kind of like my first 
you know, in, inclusion into all this stuff. And there's something called controlled remote viewing. And this is something that was invented by Ingo Swan, who is a psychic and an artist who has been test, who was tested. Do you know who Ingo many, Swan many is? Times uh, I don't, no, I don't know Ingo Swan. He worked for the goddamn government. Now, look, he if you want to say, you know, years. Yeah. Mm. If you want to be like, this is all horse shit, mm. you could say that. Mm -mm. But the, you could say the government wasted money on it, but he did it. Yes. The CIA. I, I know Lin Swan, though. Lin Swan. The football That's player? A different one, yes. Okay, different, Less different swan. Yeah. All right, different swan. So Ingo <laughs> started this program. It ran for 20 years yes. in the Department of Defense. And uh, they did the most amazing shit. You have to see a documentary called Third Eye Spies from Lance McGee. And he interviews all the directors in the different agencies and says, yeah, it was real. Yeah, this happened. They shows you the incredible drawings. It's this technique. Mm. It's a seven-page technique that gets astounding non-local information like not coincidence not like oh that guy's smart and, and there's a tech oh there's an actual written instructions yeah seven it's a seven page oh, long process send that to me. anyone can do it um you know they kept getting audited at the cia this program and they're like the auditor would come in and be like okay you guys are bullshitting with this psychic crap okay show me what you know what you you know how you do this and he go through all their paperwork and their finances and everything and so what they learned to do uh ingo swan and the directors of it um kurt russell and not kurt russell i mean you know, russell targ very famous phys physicist not kurt russell different guy who had ufo experience a famous physicist named russell tard russell tard he's a wow. laser pioneer genius it's he has not one tard. Of wow he brought a pride to the, the name tard <laughs> and not tard right it's tard not tard tard it's tard tard Targ. spell it g oh, oh. Targ. <laughs> <laughs> Targ. <laughs> It's <laughs> Targ. I am Targ. Targ from Belgium. Targ. Wow. Okay, what a so, great name. Okay, go ahead. And he is an, an amazing guy. Um, uh -huh. Anyway, the CIA would come in and he learned over time to teach them the process and have them do it to validate it. So the auditors would come in. Their first experience doing control room, remote viewing was like, boom, incredible accuracy. And then approve the program every year. And he learned to do that after like the fifth year of the audits. Um, so this is wow. astonishingly real. You have to experience it yourself. I can teach you guys the formula. Apparently, i am got incredibly good accuracy. I uh, met and worked with people in intelligence and government agencies and different groups. And I can say this now. I don't want to make a big deal of it. But I worked for like or played, I guess I should say, for four years or more with genius head scientist from skinwalker named eric bard and uh it's totally under the table just you know uh, working with him no and i don't, don't want to get too deep into it but the stuff that we experienced um you really have to experience it yourself to know the validity of it so the should we get the stephen greer shit, package we were talking about it just to do like it going out the now, yeah the stephen don't greer do the Steven, don't go the stephen greer route because it's gonna be like don't eight grand that. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the good route to go. He's become very he yeah, was you a can really see it, yeah. pioneer. He's yeah. become very um uh, Dude, the ultimate kind of the ultimate conspiracy yeah, is real... money. The ultimate conspiracy is always fucking money. It's amazing. Happened to the my pillow guy. Mike Pillow. And he goes into <laughs> Mike pillow. everyone wants in this you know stuff and UFOs and phenomenology, everyone wants to be the purveyor of the truth. You know, I'm the guy who met, you know, Zamdar from, you know, whatever, and this is the facts. And uh, it, Stephen Greer did incredibly well at first. He was an emergency room doctor, and another emergency, uh, another doctor named Dr. Burke, and him, when they were both long-haired hippies, went out and did some of these protocols the first time. And I heard a story from Dr. Burke that was stunning. They were just about to leave after, oh, first Dr. Greer explained to him, UFOs are being seen a lot at concerts. And uh, Dr. Greer thought it might be because of the lights and the sound and the activity. So he bought a big, like, sun gun flashlight thing. And they went out into the desert, flashing in the sky for a while. And after a while, nothing happened. They were just about to leave. And then a, a gigantic fucking triangle flies straight towards them, right above them, and then behind it, was a saucer. And they both talk about it independently. They both talk about it the same way. It definitely happened. Buddy, and, have uh, you seen have you seen the uh, patent for the triangle 
ship that's anti grav 2018 patent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it called? The yeah. Manta or something? Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of, uh, yes, the Black Manta. Black Manta. I think yeah. it was called. African American um, Manta great, guys. African American. Can we have some respect for some things in this fucking <laughs> UFO fucking conversation? You know, it's so <laughs> it's so weird to me that uh, there's been tons of studies. There's a genius guy named Dr. Is. Dean Radin. You know who Dean Radin is? No. Dean Radin is. Um, no. He's done a ton of studies, real empirical scientific studies with peer review um, of psychic ability, intuitive ability, and people's ability to affect random number generators, psychokinesis, essentially. And all of these studies, and these have been done for years. I mean, not just by him, by institutions, Stanford, Princeton. Princeton had the uh, anomalies lab that ran for like, you know, 30 years or something like that. We know that there is this weird thing that you get little tiny pieces of information from someplace. We don't know where. Agreed. We don't know how, but it's real shit. Jimmy Carter said that the remote viewing program was the most amazing thing during his presidency that he had seen. That peanut monkey. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. And, but uh, listen, I think they do get little pieces of things here and there, but so I you know, the, the counter would be that, the government's stupid and will blow money on a thing and they're easily fooled with, you know, like James Randi did all the, hey, come collect this fucking money being psychic. All right. Just, but now no, I will say. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the reason why people pay I'm money. just pointing that out that, that you know, so, I always hedge it is what I'm saying. Yeah. You have to. You have to. And you have to try and say, where is the science? Where's the physics in this? And, you know, right. here's the important part. To someone who's a skeptic and doesn't know the information, at least realize throughout history, phenomena has almost always represented emerging new science. Yeah. So uh, 200 years ago, there was all this weird phenomena and stuff going on. People thought it was demon energy and, and this, that, and the other. It was a bunch of different phenomena. And a guy named Volta unified this weird stuff into the electromagnetic field, explained static electricity that when you get zapped or the torpedo fish that zaps people and all this stuff. And all the mystery disappeared. All that fear Buddy. and mystery of this demon energy, you know, and I think that's happening now. There is a well, new field, and uh, you know, two hundred years later, after discovering the electromagnetic field, we couldn't live without it. We can't imagine that. Yeah, right, Wait, buddy. But you know how they, you know, uh, here's what happens: is all the pop kind of science shit. Yeah. Remember, string theory was this huge popular thing, and uh, like, meanwhile, me everybody's like, "That's horseshit now." But all the famous scientists mm -hmm. that made a bunch of money, like almost like UFO people, yeah. off of the <laughs> like now you watch it you'll see it like debunked by like <laughs> reputable scientists yeah um do you think like um string uh, theory hasn't completely debunked by the way well no, no, it's no, not no. it's but it's not con like a lot of money it's went into because it, but basically because money controls everything that was the thing you would want it was a hot new thing it was as a, a scientist new, yes. yes so it's now like get funding what's interesting to me is you'll hear shit like oh everything's a hologram you hear all this shit yeah. that could borderline sound like a religion, but they're like, it's all yeah. that. And that's, what's like eerie to me is that. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it's the science that fucks me up when those things end up being reproducible and scientifically proven to, you know, five Sigma or six or whatever. That's the stuff that wigs me out. But a study that this? says, yeah. So like, cause I was, I watched Linda Moulton how now a lot, right? You love her. I do love her. She was uh, back before electricity. Let She's amazing. Something. Um, I, but I adore her. She has, it's almost know. like she has everything from like the most fucking new age shit to the most interesting little details. Okay. She yeah. aggregates it yeah. all. So yeah. she got big. Titties. They were talking about some, cause, cause what I try to do is try to piece together the parts of the stories that match up and see, you know, like that's what you gotta look for. Like repeating. Things, is it internally right? consistent? Yeah. So one thing that I look for yeah. is how many fucking fingers did they have on the thing? So okay. Sometimes you'll hear it's four fingers with little suction things on the tip. Right. Then sometimes <laughs> you'll hear other numbers. Now I watched that guy Richard Doty say that the uh, what's the guy's name? Bob is a guy. It's an alien in black video, and he's like, "Oh, that was real." But his own words were they have four fingers, and then you show Bob, and he's got a thumb. He said there were no thumbs. So then I'm like, "That's a." Well, that's an impen. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so she was talking about reincarnation. You know, the, there's some obsession with souls and soul containers. Now, here's the thing that I bump up against with that: is one soul container. 
church. Yeah, like yeah, like the idea of a soul is a Greek thing. Like Christian, some Christian, I was Jehovah's Witness. We didn't believe in a soul. We were like old Jews. Yeah, that's that what they don't believe you. in a in a separate ghost inside you. Okay, you're but, still like an old Jew, by the way. Yeah, I I, I, I had the hair for it. Hey, so you, then, you. <laughs> but uh, well, she's talking about yeah. reincarnate. So okay. So if there's a, such a thing as a soul, I don't imagine it like a ghost. Seven right? ounces what I imagine stuff. it as is if you play some like fucking PlayStation or game and you create your own character, right? And Boom, you're you're and yep, then so that's what a right. soul would be that okay. The and guy then who's making the character. I played a bunch of different games and made new characters, and is that what exactly. reincarnation is, right? That's like kind of, I that's reincarnated kind of in twenty right. ninja games over the years. Yeah, I believe so that's, that's how I that imagine feels right, doesn't it feel right? Like, well, I did like, DMT, and that's why I thought that. Uh, well, that might have given you some insight. It feels like we're getting into area that I, this is not my specialty, you know, because there's nothing you can pin down to physics, but there's things that feel right and resonate. And this area, you know, there's something about this body and this life that feels foreign right from being a child, even. I don't know how much you guys have experienced that. It just feels weird. I transitioned body, back and forth at least three times. So, yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. Thank there, you, there Caitlyn you Jenner. You Those hormones wreaked like, havoc on my female body. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> don't drive while you transition. All I drive and drive. Day. <laughs> All of I HRT day. and drive myself. <laughs> Do you? I go through the seven stages of grief, anger, acceptance. Car's full. It's a full car. <laughs> Wait, so I want to know about tranaloids because you were talking. Because like, this is what I always look for now. I want to know about the gut. Okay. So you hear I got some cool drawings and pictures and stuff. I know I saw on her thing. So Show okay, it. there's bring it up. See the tall white thing interests me because I hear them casually mixed up with the Nordic aliens, but from what I get, it's a separate thing. And that guy yeah, Charles Hall separate. says really interesting. Now I don't know if he made it up, but he said they're not from the, even the galaxy. The Nordics, he said. He called them the Norwegians with 24 teeth. The other ones, oh, he said they had the least good. It took them the longest to get here. The Greys had the best shit, okay? And then the fucking tall whites came from a Arcturus or whatever. I don't care where they came from, but <laughs> they had really nice shit. But w like the trans- Here's an oh, like interesting thing. Here's an interesting thing about the Greys and some of these species. Let's say there's an advance, that, let's say 500 years in the future for humans. We will be able to create all sorts of probes and we will keep sending them right. out like Voyager and all that stuff. And over AI. time we get more- Yes, sure. Like there's something called the von Neumann probe, which is the, an idea that you send these probes out to different solar systems and they reproduce themselves. They surveillance the galaxy. I mean, that solar system, then they keep reproducing and spreading. So right. a civilization could slowly garner more and more knowledge. OK, um, so if you're creating ships, if you're doing all this advanced technology, you wouldn't go yourself to Earth. Right. You wouldn't sin, jeopardize, you would have some sort of, like we have with video games and robots, they would have a, quote, avatar. These right. beings, these greys, most people believe, and there are some scientists who said they've examined the bodies. These are guys who are reputable, not the wacky doodle ones, that say these are created beings for the missions, for the craft, for all the you know different stuff. And if that is true, if you can create a second generation life form, we're... We could do that, I think, in a, you know, 500 years or something. Yeah, uh, it, it brings it to a different level. Yeah, so greys, they think, are... Who's the, the ones are. making it, though? Like, are they taller That's greys? That's the question. Who Nobody is knows. the primary intelligence? What right. is the primary intelligence? If something is more advanced than you, it can trick you. Right. Every yeah. one of your senses, it can yeah. trick your cognizance. I can, take, I can trick my dog so thoroughly, it's not even funny, just by taking a ball and putting it under my shirt, yeah. you know? Um, imagine how thoroughly we could be tricked. We like to think we're not. Well, no, I can't be tricked. You know, Dude, Sherrod got can't. me with close your eyes, open your mouth one time. Yeah. <laughs> see, uh, see? See? Three days in a row, too. <laughs> Dummy. So I figured by the third time it had to be something good. <laughs> <laughs> Every time it was good. <laughs> oh, wow. That is <laughs> well, it's, it, it kind of keeps with the anal probe, you know, with the aliens. So that kind of, it all fits in. It all fits, um, yeah. Yeah. This stuff is, is, un, is wild. We okay, wait, can I ask you? Because yeah. this is what I want to know the most is, oh, had, what have you, you and without, just with full, not even questioning your- Give me one more of your claws. Yeah, some claws. With, without, without just assuming everything you know is saying is real. What's an, uh, what, what races have you remote viewed that you think are races and what ones- are an AI because I hear there's like 
fucking seven kinds of grays from these people. Seven grays? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when you do remote viewing or you assess a remote viewer, there are some, there are verifiable targets, like what's in this house or what's in this box or what's in, in France. And these can be verified, okay? You can only judge a remote viewer's uh, accuracy on unverifiable targets by how well at least they do on their verified. I saw targets. you get JSAP. I've gotten into a bunch of this stuff. Dude, I, oh, I this is why I got Buddy. I saw her talking to an old video. Hold on, Lainey, the check. We're talking to him, and he says something Linda. on the side, said uh, Joe Sab, uh -huh. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then later, Special program. he's talking about JSAP, which stands for Julie, a a a Julie ASAP, ASAP, which is shooting down. So he picked a thing on an old video that sounds very much like the name that it turned out to be. Right. Which is kind of cool, but... Uh, Okay, and I you was to... watching this and saw this, okay, and then heard talking about really it quickly. Before I go so into where? the um, uh, Trontoloids, I did a viewing last January. She asked me if the uh, uh, war would happen in Ukraine before 2014. I said it would happen in five weeks. I did a drawing, series of drawings that showed a gigantic warship burning, a giant battleship burning. I drew a thing of the a map of the uh, battle order, where it would start, what uh, position would be attacked from where, when. I mean, the, the Rand Corporation I printed it out publicly, but <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah. You, can you guys see um, stuff here? I could send you uh, uh, some of the pictures. It's stunning. One of them looks like an exact drawing, uh, an exact image of a field with the road and all the blow-up craters from the bombs yeah. from a drone of POV. I said that the Kursk Bridge would be blown up after the start of the war. I said all these different things that ended up coming true, and of course that could be luck. But there's a statistical, you know, probability for each one of those predictions. And when all of them come, come true, true, it's yeah. pretty interesting. When in January, a lot of people didn't think it was going to happen. So, okay, trontoloids. Um, Maybe you giving Russia the blueprint on how to attack Ukraine. Never thought about that? When you're psychic gifts? <laughs> Putin's uh, like, that's a good idea. We should go up across there. Well, the Russians <laughs> had right? that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy, Buddy Bolton? <laughs> So trontoloids and all these other species, there's a bunch. I think our universe is suspiciously constructed for life. Life needs energy and habitat in the most basic context. And all our universe is is basically energy and habitat, suns and rocky shit. Is that so a there's good a lot picture? Of life. Do you see that picture of a trontoloid? It says Does that, that this is in? based on his description. It is? Based yeah. on buddies? Yeah. Yeah. Does that, can you see it, buddy? No, I can't, but... um. It's like uh, two it, arm, yeah. four arms. I saw this online. I thought it was a stupid looking drawing, but <laughs> that guy Richard Doty talked about one that was insectoid that had another ar forearm coming out of its arm. Yeah, I know a dude like that. <laughs> now I don't know all that information is correct. With remote viewing, you follow the process, okay? Um, and portions can be right, portions can be wrong. You know all that stuff. So um, I'm not saying that this is absolutely the, the fact, but this is what I got from doing the process. Right. And these, yeah. I think it makes a lot of logical sense that the things we see on this planet, the different life forms, will have yeah. analogies other places because the conditions are the same. Right. Because the of convergent evolution. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see familiar shit in other like life crabs forms. Like crabs, there's going to be crabs everywhere. It's going to be more uh, insect-like. Okay, but they that one. This planet, that's they planet after all, ain't it, buddy? Here's what here's what the what I know of: tall Good whites, point, tall whites, the Norwegians, <laughs> the um, the Greys, like who play all sides. I Wait, guess. who's going to yeah, play how about Michael? The post biologicals. How about the they're Greys? Of all of them. which Wait, ones? What is that? Look at this stuff. They're it's, worse than um, Tranaloids. Wait, which Much one's worse. playing? Which one's playing Michael Jordan in Space Jam? Who was playing Lamar? Yeah, and Space Jam. Whites. Okay, it's all white. Okay. <laughs> they got a good game. Good wait, okay, game. wait. So tell me about. Okay, wait. To explain the tranaloids. They're oh, not bad or they are bad. I know that's simplistic. Uh, to they're say. kind of like they do their own thing. Whether we think it's bad or not, that's our personal judgment of good or bad. You know, it doesn't really care about. They like the else. Chinese. They they like the work. Chinese. Like, exactly. They don't give a fuck. So they're inscrutable. That's what I'm taking from this. Inscrutable. They're kind of inscrutable. They're very, as you would think, kind of robot like, as you see in insects here. Um, yeah. They, uh, they're they're a, a problem, but it's not, not personal. You know, it's not a personal thing. But they can look like anything. 
even LeBron James. Uh, apparently, they all these different creatures that are more advanced than us technologically can do a lot of weird shit. You can imagine, right? Wouldn't you? Yeah. Assume? Well, it sounds like there's a lot of crossover where they they know to look like Norwegians, kind of like uh, code switching in the black community uh, for your telemarketing job. Could you yeah, imagine? How you know tall blacks. Where there is. Black. I looked it up. There is tall blacks, but there they is. think it's there. trantaloids posing as tall blacks. Could you imagine a fishbowl party with stuff, these guys? It, it, some of the stuff. Oh, is the so wives. The you know the actor Yafet Kodo. The actor Yafet. Oh yeah, Koto. I love him. He has an experience with the tall blacks. What? Yeah. He ran into him. Yes. And what did he say happened? Dude, this no, is what makes me laugh. To me. The tall black story is. I don't know if this is his or is a different person's tall black story. But they got the sense that the creature was not really what it looked like. Because they're like this. Why of you course, keep saying yeah. job they, turkey? And they said they, they don't put, say job turkey they no put more. Them and the other abductees in a room, and they had an extra joint, and they were like doing some kind of. They called it a hula dance with an extra joint, and he realized, oh, they want us to mimic this dance, right? Which sounds like popping and locking to me. Yeah, it sounds like popping and locking. Sure does, yeah. So they were kidnapped by the tall blacks, <laughs> and they were. Try to teach them to break dance is what I took from the story. So now black people don't even come up with that. The, the aliens so came the up with blacks, break dancing now. Michael J. Fox did. Tall blacks as as like the tall Asian women. What? Uh, that, what the big butts? Another, <laughs> another race, the tall Asian women. It's another race. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, trans women are women. I is think, it really? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. So the but what's the post-biological? Post yeah. This is creepy. We can see in human beings and our technology how we're integrating. We're slowly almost becoming cyborgs. Yeah. I would. I'm no, autism is devastating, and I believe it's the is the Tylenol pregnant lady stake. Personally, mm. there's a class action lawsuit against them against Tylenol because what do you always got to have in all your medicine is Tylenol. Yeah, when I was a it, fucking yeah. junkie on Oxy, everybody knew the opiate's not killing you as fast as the Tylenol. That's why Oxys that have no what? Tylenol. Really? You right? Rush Limbaugh when he went deaf, that was from fucking perk oxycodone. The Tylenol wow. made him go. That's what it does. Wow. So now there's a lawsuit, not very publicized, by the way, a class action of pregnant women that took it and they had autistic kids. And look, I'm, I don't know the science of it, but where all the autism come from? Yeah. Well, what's around? Way. I don't know. It, it don't sound far fetched. Because back in my day, we didn't call it autism. We as called a, it as a junkie. Can't get right. Yeah. Title. But the autism is like, <laughs> you, like, Thanks, guys. some of these people could not. Pass a touring test, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that in the future, we're going to continue to merge with technology more and more. And you can imagine the benefits of completely merging with technology. Um, yes. You have, you know, you the know, downsides with everybody else. We're you ever hear of Chris videos. Chan? Have you heard of Chris mm -hmm. Chan? No, I haven't. Okay, Mike, put up a picture for Shrod. I don't know if Buddy can see uh, it. Is this going to be half man, half cyborg? You've heard of the singularity? You've all heard of the singularity. Yes, of yes. course. Where yeah. all the technology and connectedness merges into the, this is the end result, I believe. Oh, no. Chris Chan. Is it a robot dick? No, put him. Put Chris Chan up. I can't take that. I can't take up. Is this an Asian guy who implanted shit into him? No. So, there you go. That him? That's the singularity right there. That guy, Chris Chan. The guy? Well, he transit. He's severely uh, high. They say high functioning autistic, but it don't look high functioning to me. Well, what did he do? Let me see his math scores, dude. There is a seventy part Geno Samuels Ken Burns documentary. You'll never see it on Netflix because there's a lot of inconvenient shit in it. Right? Because mm. I believe he was trolled into transitioning because they told him if you trans, oh. you don't have any consequences for your actions. Really? I swear to God. This is the most. Do this is the most uh, Truman Show documented human who's ever lived on the internet. Mm. Is Chris Chan? Okay. You oh, will I know you talk about now. Yes, yes. That's the singularity to me. That is the chosen one. He now thinks he's Jesus. By the way. And now imagine this if not. we were yeah. all connected. If we were all Chris Chans and we are, we were all connected. And we you had mean the current knowledge. present? Yeah, I can imagine it because it's in front of me. Like the Borg. Like the Borg. Like they. But if the Borgs sure. were furries. That bad, or if okay. the Borgs decided to lose the biological component and go completely more efficient post biological, buddy, do you have to have a biological component first to make, like, let's say, you make you an get AI? To post biological? I would think so. I think you have to evolve intelligence yeah. and technology before you can make that like transition. a conscious biological decision to say fuck this. Like, I feel like an AI couldn't do it without the insight of a biological creature. Well, that's the question, boys. Chicken and egg. Okay, it so tell me about slowly, these things. though. It's insidious. It's kind of like the apocalypse. It doesn't have to happen all at once. 
the transition to, you know, uh, I've been on TikTok. I know <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> exactly. It's in little pieces. You know, yeah. it's happening yeah. to us before now. you know it before you know it. it's already happened. We already are uh, 30 percent over headed toward it. I yeah, think we're about 50 I well, can't I'm wait. Four, I'm four or five wait. white claws deep into this, and it's well, not getting any better. Let me just tell you this right now. Robot oh. lives matter. <laughs> they do. What about if these craft are sentient? What if a craft is, what if technology, something physical is sentient that's not biological? It's more sentient than the current crowd at the fat black pussycat. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more of a sentient creature than the average college graduate currently who is Caucasian or even black, but they count as Caucasian in my book. Uh, on the right campus. <laughs> like, I don't so think Don technology. Lemon is sentient. Does that mean gay? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, that's his, he was saving humanity. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> wow. Um, I love this shit, man. Thinking about the possibilities of the future, our technology, the aspects of things we, the mysteries in physics now, uh, we're in a beautiful time to be alive in many ways. Beautiful. We can see how, we can see how past extinctions happened. We can prevent our extinction. No other. Just as dumb. I mean, it's not as good as, you know, when they make some better shit after I'm dead. That'd yeah. be better. We just as dumb That's as ever. We, just, we should be smarter right now. Just because we got technology and instruments that make us look like we're smart. We just as dumb no. as a caveman. It made Ain't like everybody dumber. made the cell phone. Yeah, Buddy, everybody didn't make the cell phone. I think it has made a handful dumber. of people made you know cell phones hate? and all this technology. Handful of people. So everybody else is just as dumb as we ever you know been what I on hate this planet. The most <laughs> funny, dumber. Dumber. In the Charles Hall, that's why I liked him, because he didn't have, I can't stand the alien fucking abduction message of like, you guys are hurting the earth. I'm like, oh, so you decided the best course of action was to find everyone who thinks Bigfoot is real and <laughs> tell me <laughs> through them. Like, right? wh wh look, and motherfucker, he, you got a better way, hand it over. We would love to have it. Love to have it. You I'm think so they would do something more demonstrative than like secretly tell one person at a time to save your planet or you're all going to die. Something a little bit more. You know, well, what if you don't give a shit, stuff. really, and you're just here to have your fucking ship repaired on your way to something cooler? Because yeah, what that guy described... Avatar vacation. Yeah, yeah Avatar vacation. I don't like, like when aliens come around on our planet, like somebody yeah. coming to your house telling you you need to take care of your house. It's like, money, you are a guest here. Yeah. I mean, I don't, don't honestly, tell me I'm not taking care of myself. it's all my bad feelings towards immigrants magnified by a lot. Yeah, it's like, beat it. Go back over the border, <laughs> whatever galactic border you came here. I resent Canadians for having jobs here. Uh, I'll be call, honest with you. I call them northern Mexicans. Yeah, I call them the, the small I call whites. Them tall, all really whites. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I don't even give them height. They're incredibly white. The Tom Green. Okay, so wait. Go ahead about these post uh, biologicals. I want to know exactly. You just want to get to the bottom of it's a logical um, progression of technological society that these beings would slowly over time merge, become more hive-like. They may be individuals, but also connected to an overall hive um, connection with all of them. And this is important. If you really think about it, as technology grows more powerful, fewer and fewer people can do more and more damage with less and less. Technology gets very dangerous. Now we fear the lone wolf, you know, where yeah. it used to be you fear an army. You know, army yeah. would take out a city in, in months. Now one person with a suitcase nuke can take out a city. So right. technology gets very, very dangerous. And how do you handle the lone wolf? How does a society survive if they... You mean a more Sigma more male? Power? Yeah, we got to make sure these lone wolves have friends. Because you got friends that are going to run your mouth, and that's they how we're going to catch therapist. you. My yacht is in my pants. <laughs> wow. <laughs> these lone wolves need a hug. Yeah, these lone white but, wolves. Uh, okay. These white wolves, you son of a bitch. So, <laughs> do, is you white, had, did you remote view any other things that were uh, like against, for, or again the uh, post biologicals, such as uh, just anything about the specific yeah, they're races? They're, they advance so much faster than the biologicals. The biologicals have kind of uh, banded together, some of them against the post biologicals. Because uh, they just kind of, they're kind of like an algae that just takes over things un unstoppably. And that might be why they, uh, the races are here. Um, depending on what races really are here, um, it's. Well, doesn't know, post biological, comes, doesn't it sound like it, whatever the fuck we are is uh, post, I don't know, not being physical? Rough, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like post, uh, I don't know what you call it, spiritual. Then you, you're like a different, you're like an AI, but made out of meat. 
and then you make an AI yeah. that's not meat, that's like worse. No, I, this is pretty great. They might work. It's pretty great. <laughs> it's pretty great. They might be incredibly uh, cold and work on premises that we don't understand even. You know, yeah. these super advanced computers and technologies that could get into some really creepy places. And I think that the story from the, the biologicals, the other races, that there is this non-biological thing doing a lot of uh, colonization, I guess, of, of galaxies. Um Here's it's the fascinating. Thing. Yeah, you know? the biological, the human part of us is the best and the worst thing about us. Absolutely. It's such a good point. You know, a lot of people say, well, humans don't deserve to survive because there's, you know, sociopaths and serial killers. But you know what? All the different weird people, the fluffy, weird creatures. It's just people, racist. Like, you know, this is what it is. Help. It's racist. Yeah. <laughs> humans have Race survived wars. because of our diversity. You know, yes. the, the. I didn't do nothing. Sociopaths. <laughs> the sociopaths, and, you know, the, the psychopaths. Yeah. You need uh, them. Whatever path you that you're on in life. Yeah. Or you need people with Asperger's like me to think weird shit and, yeah. you know, think about, oh, we need to save food for the winter. It's going to be a bad winter this yes. year. I'm sensing it. <laughs> That's how we and get shit like satellites and escalators. Everybody can be thinking the same. <laughs> well, you know, we you know 42,000 years from, ago, um, 42,000 years ago was the last um, pole flip. And there's a massive yeah. glaciation. Yeah. And they killed all the other human subspecies, you know, or, or separate species, the Neanderthals. Humans were the only out. ones who yeah. came out of that. All the megafauna died. I thought the uh, pole flips people. have happened more than that. And it happened it, several times. Oh, the last one was times. a desert. But like we're in, in human history now. now. Yeah. We're right. in one now. We're in the process. The magnetic field of Earth is normally like this, you know, let's say, 100%. It's at 50% now. It's because all, all that gay fucking, dude, uh, global friction, and it causes a problem. And when it flips, I'm telling you, it's on. It is on, son. <laughs> it's starting to flip already. It's a process. The poles are moving fast as crap. If you look at a magnetic field map of the Earth now, yeah. there's all these little mini poles. They're calling them anomalies. And they're mm. all migrating. We're in the middle of the flip. And what happens, the scariest part, in the middle of the flip, as these little poles and everything are transitioning to the other side, yeah. the magnetic field goes Out. to zero, zero. Because all that energy for the field is now being used for the migration and the flip. Uh, and well, this is why I say build a wall. And nobody wanted to listen. Skin cancer time. Oh, it's worse than that. Mm. You know, the last one was a mega extinction because they had no atmosphere. They had no shielding. They had no electromagnetic field. Um, you know, Mars was like Earth. Yeah. And we will become like Mars in time. Mm. We're in a bad pole shift right now. If you guys look at this stuff, it'll scare the shit out of you. And I'm not talking. I did look at it. Stuff. Now, I thought a lot of that was uh, like asteroids and shit. No, that's no, false. no, no. This is just losing our magnetic field from the pole flip. Which we're in now. We're about fifty percent into the pole flip. We're only gonna lose and it for a week and a two. It's only gonna be a week and a two. This is for the weekend. <laughs> and, you know what makes it even worse is solar flares. Solar yeah. flares are even more damaging now. That yeah. even up yeah. when the sun the, farts, dude. But, but here's the good. I mean, here's the good news, guys. By the yeah. time that happens, huh? We'll still be podcasting. Yeah, we'll, I think we'll make these it. podcasts. We'll, what? Humans, uh, Homo sapiens made it through the last pole flip, and at that time, there was a huge burst of cave art from 42,000 years ago. That was yeah. our, our ancestors. Homos make it through everything, man. I mean, I guess it's yeah. God's will, these homos. Yeah, yeah, wide variety of homos. Nothing on that. Um, okay, wait. Is there any other specific races that you know anything about? That's what I want to hear about. I don't care about the technology. I'm not autistic. Um. Like There's you, quite a few different ones on Trappist. I did a viewing of Trappist One. Okay. The Trappist system there, and there's two planets that have life that okay. I just that I saw in my viewing. Okay. One of them is an ocean planet. It's a very high, you know, majority ocean planet, and there's these really kind of porpoisey looking, uh, intel super intelligent creatures. Now, ocean? You mean water, or you just mean liquid? Oh, water, exactly. Good point. Because there can be uh, oceans of methane. It can be mercury, and, uh, yeah. Mercury. If they're so yeah. smart, why aren't they on land? That's how I look at it. Yeah, I'm mermaid racist, pussy. So. <laughs> I'll take yeah. some of that space mermaid pussy. Wait, so what do you mean by porpoise like specifically? They're kind of like porpoise shape. Like fat um, asses? Oh, you mean the planet? Yeah. The, like Kyle's dad from South Park? <laughs> Birth and hips? <laughs> he became a porpoise. Uh, <laughs> do you ever see that? Oh, yes, he became. That's right. He turned into a porpoise. 
like a, a blowhole. That's, I guess, what I'm getting at. No, they have a kind of a prehensile little mini trunk as, as opposed to like a porpoise's thing. It's kind of like very okay. uh, nimble, and can, can manipulate things. And in its fins, its side fins, it has little uh, like mandibles, like kind of like a, a, a bat. So it can manipulate things and, and do things. Like and count money, you know, like merchants. <laughs> <laughs> I hear what like, you're saying. Diddly, 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 diddly. You can do that to the females. Um, and it's a super intelligent race that has built um, – a, I guess its cities are totally like organically melded with the planet and uh, much more symbiotic than our kind of uh, society where everything's like trash and waste. Everything's super efficient in their um, civilization. And it's really cool. Then another planet has a wide variety of weird life forms, like giant kind of uh, centipede caterpillars and um, all sorts of weird stuff. And I, I this is, you know, you just write down what you get. <clears throat> and this stuff seems real to me. Um, I did a viewing on Europa. I was asked to do a viewing on Europa and uh, Enceladus. And uh, there's bioluminescent life in both of those. There's, of course, the really low-level algaes and uh, stuff like that. But there's also bioluminescent life down there and a, a variety of it. Um, mm. And that makes sense in a way, too, because they're, they're ice-covered and they're going to have to be able to mate and you know all the different things, different reasons why... Uh, Animals on Earth use bioluminescence. Yeah, so they can be so, seen and mating and yeah. Anything yes. that's we'll not made of... Everywhere. Is there anything mm-hmm. not made of DNA? Oh. Yeah, there's how can we even pick it up? Forms. Yeah, I think silica. There's silica life forms. Um, all sorts of different types of life forms. But ain't that um, still DNA? It, no, it doesn't have to be DNA. It can be another system. I okay. think we're going to find... A lot of similarity, though, because the laws of the universe are the same in the entire universe. Not you, not here no. is there. Quantum's not. Um, so there could be a planet Quantum just like science Earth. Is not the same, but with more gravity, and they'll be like stubby, stronger, you know, more built humans because the gravity is stronger. Um, like Greeks, so, basically. Yeah, man. Bus boys. This this universe Breaking was plates. made for life. A lot of diners. Uh, but they say that in regular science stuff. They say it's fine-tuned is the phrase I hear thrown around a bit. Yeah, it's suspiciously so. It's like so – it's so weird that we have – each solar system is kind of like a chicken, you know, coop. And there's a row – every solar system is like a different place that has the energy and the habitat. And they go up and they're separate enough. Solar systems are separate enough so that there's not – a uh, all this extra entropy of them overlapping and maybe killing each other and all this stuff. It's suspiciously weird how we have the energy, the habitat. They're all spaced apart. Space so that apart. getting further apart evolve. every day, getting further apart. Do you ever go True. into the uh, Boaties Void? Do you ever look at Booties. those void strip club? Yeah. Um, no, I haven't looked at the Booties Void. Do you know what's about? It's all that. blacked out. Gay strip club. Yes, it's it's. Um, some, I think it's a cloud that prevents us from seeing that way. It's not actually no stars in that area. Oh, I think it's a, a it's the dip. Thing. You know, it's the dip in a fucking. You know, it's a flat thing. How Einstein thought it's the dip because all the so planets laid on like, it. You can't see around the dip. <laughs> yeah, it's like around the corner. Um, anybody? Anything so, else? Anything else? Um, um, psychokinesis is real. They've done studies about about it, and you can bet if it is true that you'll see other beings using this. And it's not like uh, X-Men. It's a small percentage chance. It, you know, it's a, in a finite area, you know, but uh, everyone can affect random number generators, make them uh, go more or less. And they've done just so many studies on this stuff. And it's real. It's just a weird small effect. And uh, I have learned that if you work on that small effect, you can increase that percentage of accuracy and more and more and more accurate. So check out Third Eye Spies. It will blow your mind. It is real. There is some wild ass shit you haven't seen in your life yet, but it's there. I'm watching and there's, de- there's definitely UFOs visiting our planet, or they may already have been here. They've been here. They might be from a previous civilization. You know, well, there's been a lot, lot of time on this earth to do a lot of different weird shit, and we've had to go underground a lot of times. You sound like you know, if you had to go underground, office. you'd be shorter. You'd, you'd evolve all shorter. If a human had to live underground, it'd, it'd evolve shorter. Yeah. Their skin would get like all of those cave creatures, like a translucent kind of gray. Yeah. And their eyes would be bigger so they could see in low light. 
That I'll still have a big dick, though. Too, doesn't it? I'll still have a big dick, though. I'll tell you that if I want to. I think it might even be bigger because you have to. How would you dig those tunnels? Yeah. Um, all right, buddy, uh, where can they find your shit and uh, uh, promote it and so forth and so on? You don't have to promote any of my shit. I'm just a, they can go to Alien Protocols uh, on YouTube and see some weird ass shit. You'll learn how to do ESP. Oh, is that a good YouTube one? It's a wild, crazy shit. I go deep into the next level. I interview scientists. I've interviewed soldiers and witnesses of craft and wow. experts. Paul Murad, the head of the nuclear propulsion systems. Russell Targ, this incredible physicist who Targ. start lasers. With a G. Targ. It's not Targ That's with a right. G. G. No, Idiot. no. It's it's stupid. Targ. Remember Targ. 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 Yeah. He's a leader. Um, so, <laughs> Sharati, what, what are you promoting? You know what we what? can do? Yes. Even, what? You guys what? have the balls. I could teach one of you guys remote viewing, and you could try it live. No, we'll do it. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down All for right. it. Teach it? me first. Let's do it. Why are you going to get taught first? Yeah, Let's we'll do talk. it. Whoever wants to, I'll teach. Let's talk uh, off air. And I, I love seeing you guys. I'm so proud of your yeah, show. I love you, man. I miss you. I love you guys and your intellects and your fucking crazy Yeah, thanks minds. for coming in, man. Um, all I right. love you guys. Buddy! Uh, you go on <laughs> KurtMaskerComedy.com and Kurt Masker Comedy on Instagram and Kurt Masker Kurt Masker. on Twitter. And Kurt and, shut up, and, uh, Yeah. All right. So that was Buddy Bolton giving us- This is the end, huh? Yeah, this is the end. All right, so let, let me do some pluggy plugs. Yeah, plug something. Yes, uh, uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Check out the show Harlem, Harlem on Amazon Prime. Then uh, everything's going to be all white on Showtime. Everything's going to be all white on Showtime. I then pray Peacock. to God that it is so. Yeah, well, <laughs> you'll see. Oh, you'll see. <laughs> everything's going to be all white. And then uh, second season of uh, Girls 5 Ever on Peacock. That's it. And Race Wars, we're back. We're coming back. That's can't get right. All right, thanks, God. Well, yeah, can't get right. It's Race Wars, though. Oh, yeah, can't get it's right. All of it. Right. All right, that's it. Thanks. I missed you. <laughs> I missed you. Because I can't get right. Because I can't get right. Yeah. You're listening to Can't Get Right. Can't get right.